Well, you know, Jeff and I had spent a lot of time together over the past few weeks and even months uh, just trying to get his two target deer down in there in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, we, we got moose down on Halloween night. Um, just came in perfect, perfect light. Uh, you couldn't ask for much more. Being the camera guy, just it, it all came together and it, it was perfect. And then, you know, a week later we got the griffin buck down and, and you know, after not getting the job completely finished, uh, when it snowed a, a few weeks earlier for him to come back in, uh, Jeff made a great shot, and we, we closed the story on him. It was um, 2019 was off to a really, really good start. Um, but now, uh, Jeff was tagged out in Oklahoma, which gave me an opportunity uh, to jump in front of the camera for a few days. And it was going to be really cool to have my boss behind the camera, and uh, we we're just going to see if uh, we could keep that luck going. Jeff and I are sitting there and we look up and there's a big mature eight point uh, just on the other side of the fence, probably 75, 80 yards away. And uh, he sees the decoy and as soon as he saw it, um, it was it was over for Joey. It was just so cool to see him come in uh, all bristled up, walking sideways. Well, you know, it wasn't long after the eight blew up the decoy. We look up, and there's another good buck uh, and a doe just on the other side of the fence. Uh, ten point. We didn't know him. We didn't have any trail cam pictures of him. We had never seen him before. Uh, but he, he kind of glanced at the decoy, but he wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. He had a doe with him, and uh, he wasn't going to leave her side. You know, it's the middle of the late part of November, and uh, he had one thing on his mind, and he was, uh, he was more worried about that doe than he was coming into that decoy. We know all in all, it was a really, really fun morning. We had some great buck activity, but it was time to get back to work. We had a big deer in Kansas we were going after, and I would just have to come back to Oklahoma later in the month to see if I could finish the job. It is November 17th. This morning we came back in to the muddy blind that we put on a trailer that Jeff and I hunted probably a week and a half ago. We came here because there's First of all, we got several shooters that have been coming through here, but also there's been a lot of does. And this morning, you know, right after daylight, we saw we had seven or eight come through, and not a single buck. So we got the decoy out, old Joey's out, and uh, if I want cruise, we might can call to him. Well, you know, we keep using the decoy, and it's not necessarily because it's fun, but it's because it's effective. Uh, these deer up here in northwest Oklahoma, are, they're aggressive, they're dominant, and uh, when they think another buck's coming in to take over their territory, they'll uh, they'll come looking for a fight. So we, uh, we kept putting them out, trying to put them in places where the deer couldn't get downwind of us, and just hoping we could get a big buck within bow range. Well, one of the best things about this entire trip was just getting to hunt with my dad. Recently, I hadn't got to hunt with him the past few years. It was his first time in Northwest Oklahoma. I know he was uh, excited to be out there, and it was a new experience for him. Whether we killed or not, we were just going to sit there. We are going to enjoy it and just be thankful for the opportunity to, to hang out and uh, do what we love.
you know, we're sitting there and we've got does filtering in and out, headed to the alfalfa field right along that fence line. And a couple of the does kept looking back. I got the camera on him, and that's when I really got to look at him. And I saw this is this is the brow time buck. This is a buck that we really came in here after. Well guys, we uh, just got back to the house here. Um, as you saw, we just had that encounter with that brow time buck. Um, and he was there from the second we saw him until dark, so I didn't have time to really talk to the camera there. But he, uh, he came in, he was probably about 85 yards, and I stort wheezed at him, so I grunted. I mean, I basically threw the kitchen sink at him, basically. And uh, man, he wanted to come so bad over that fence, and he just, he just wouldn't do it so um, he ended up working around and he actually got about 15 yards uh, to the south of me but uh, it was basically dark anyways and there was no way I could get that window open um, and get a shot it's uh, it's encouraging to see at least see the deer um, it's a good looking deer so uh, I really don't know what we're gonna do in the morning with the wind uh, but We'll uh, we'll make a game plan and then we'll figure it out. So. Hey guys, welcome to this week's product review. I'm Jeff Danker, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about details. You know, details in hunting to me is how you shoot those big bucks. If you cross those T's, dot those I's, putting those details in, that's what does it. And that's why I love the, the company of Realtree. Those guys know how to get it done over there. Whether they're deer hunting, elk hunting, turkey hunting, it don't matter, they're taking care of details. And it bleeds over right into their patterns. For years, I've been using this pattern, not being silhouetted in that tree. And it gives me that confidence to be in there when that big buck's coming, he's facing me, I know I'm not gonna be seen or silhouetted. You know, this is the real tree edge I wore it all last year. The attention to detail is incredible. This is a pattern that I'll wear again this year. Um, you know, they've had several patterns through the past years from, from way back when that I've loved. But I'm gonna tell you, the new pattern out, Timber, is as good as it gets. This is a brand new pattern, and it might be my favorite. I say that I know every year, but I'm truthfully, as we've shot photos in this, if we've washed ourselves in these trees with the footage, this stuff blends in as good as I've ever seen. Again, right back to details. Thank you so much, Realtree. Well, it's so awesome getting to watch these little bucks dog these does like this. Uh, this time of year is my, one of my favorite times of year. Is you, you never know what can show up. Uh, we got deer running around like crazy. Oh gosh, there's a buck right here. 
Well, I look up and the warrior buck's probably 45 to 50 yards, just cutting right in front of me. It was a really, really tough decision, but I elected uh, not to shoot him. You know, he was probably a, a 170 inch type deer. Uh, he was missing almost 30 inches of antler. And I, I just felt like it would be smart of me to let him go. And hopefully he would blow into a giant for the 2020 season and we could get a crack at him. The wind is changing from the west to northwest, which I do not like for this stand at all. I'm just gonna have to sneak out of here. I think we're gonna go and send that money on that trailer. It is uh, the evening of November 23rd. We uh, just got back into this muddy ply that we got here on a trailer. Uh, had a pretty decent morning this morning. Really looking for that brow time buck. And then there's, uh, you know, who knows what can show up this time of year. The last time we sent this blind, we had the brow time buck in another nice tent. Come right up this fence line here and they were at 80 yards. Well, guys, we're here on a, a place that we call the uh, the Bachelman Ranch uh, in northwest Oklahoma. It's about 2,500 acres, and this is actually a spot that I filmed Jeff uh, earlier in the year. And there's a big alfalfa field over here to the south, and we were catching deer coming back and forth. As you can see, we've got a muddy blind here on a trailer. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but this particular spot. There's nowhere that we can we can get a tree stand in, and we we just really wanted something quick, so we threw this muddy on a trailer, put some ratchet traps on it, and moved it in here. While well, I was hunting. Uh, the landowner's grandson actually pulled up. We had a conversation, and this was, this was prime time, five o'clock, and it was, uh, you know, after that happened, I thought the evening was over, and he, he, he left, and not 15 minutes later, I looked up. There's a buck right here. It was a buck right, right here on the fence line, probably 80 yards. I got to spend some time on this place. Uh, I filmed Jeff here a few times. Uh, we were running cameras the whole time. And we really figured out how the deer were moving. You know, you could catch these deer coming, going from the alfalfa to bed up in the hills and then back in the evenings. And um, so just knowing that, this spot is basically right in between that.
is just a, a you know, beautiful looking ten point. All right, well, uh, shoot me a pic when you when you can later. But congrats. All right, thanks, sir. I'll uh, I'll send you something a little later. Okay. All right, I'll see. You. This ranch is again. It's been a, it was awesome this year, and um, just it's cool to come back here and kind of see. Uh, um, how it all went down, you know, it, it, it'll be a special deer to me just because it was the first one that I shot with Bug Ventures and um, this muddy blind here on a trailer. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but it, uh, we made it work and uh, thankfully the Lord blessed me and we were, we were able to get it done out of it. Uh, I want to thank Jeff and Daniel. Uh, you know, it's not really my job to hunt, uh, it's my job to film, but I had a few days off and he said, go out there uh, to that ranch and uh, see if you can knock one down, and we sure did. Um, this ranch, I'll tell you guys, it's for sale right now. Pristine hunting, great cattle ranch. Um, I would highly recommend it to anybody. We've had some great encounters, um, but just very, very thankful. Um, once again, all the glory to God. Um, but now it is time to get to work. We're gonna get the outdoor edge knife out, get them cleaned, and uh, I guess head to Kansas and meet Jeff in Kansas. So, beautiful deer. Just uh, very, very thankful. Well, guys, welcome to this week's Walk by Faith. And today, I want to bring up a, a very hard verse. It's Luke 9, 24. And it says this. It says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will save it. And it kind of goes along with whoever wants to be first will be last. And it's not in our nature to be last. We're, we're always, I remember wanting to be first in line or whatever. And, and it's not in our nature, so it's tough. It's, it's not in our nature to be selfless. And I tell you what, we're living in times of darkness. And as Christians and studying God's Word, this is something that I, I encourage you to meditate on, to be last, to put others first, to consider them more important than you. Let's face it, the number one commandment is to love Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And number two is to love our neighbor as ourself. And I challenge you with that. And, and you want to change things and you want to be used for God to change this world. That's where we start. Guys, I'm Jeff Danker. And remember, as we always say, shoot by sight, walk by faith.